students, this is going to be a lecture, a mini lecture on fast plants. This is going to be the typical timeline that we're going to follow. October 29th through November 1st um, is going to be the background information. That's when we went over enzymes. And then while uh, you guys, the week when you do photosynthesis and respiration, for most of you that's November 4th through the 8th, that was last week for most of you, um, we were going to do the planting. Uh, Monday, section 11, you are behind, so you did start planting today, This, um, which is November 11th. Um, we are going to collect data for the next two weeks until we can see the results, um, typically through the mitosis meiosis lab. Um, and then we will analyze the results during the Mendelian Genetics Lab. Um, during the mitosis meiosis lab, we will go over chi-square and the importance of that. And then uh, we will also retouch upon that during the Mendelian Genetics Lab. Your papers are going to be due between December uh, 2nd through the 6th. So that is when you do come back from Thanksgiving. So you guys can write your papers over Thanksgiving. Um, I made the paper and your notebook due. Um, prior to uh, the end of the semester and the reason for that is I did not want you guys to be overloaded with studying for your final. So here it is your lab schedule um, in calendar form. Um, ignore what was going here. Oh, let me get my pen on. So we had combined photosynthesis and respiration um, into one lab and then the mitosis and meiosis then got moved up. Um, so then actually Mendelian genetics is this week um, of the 18th and then um, this week here um, for my section uh, 11 you do have lab but for everybody else there is no lab this week of the week of um, Thanksgiving so no lab here. Um, and then this is when your paper is due. All right, so let me talk a little bit about your paper. Your paper will include your name, the title of the paper, your lab section, qualitative and quantitative data. Um, so that would include your statistical data um, and then also um, the number of particular plants and then um, their phenotypes. Uh, and then we're going to include a discussion. Make sure that you're giving a summary of your results um, that's going to be written as well as tables and your chi-square. You want to make sure that you're explaining your results and whether or not it supports your hypothesis. So we're all going to be writing a null hypothesis and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And you want to make sure that you discuss what this means for the inheritance of the traits. You're also going to show a simple Punnett square. So your notebook, and this is going to be a paper notebook, although in your lab manual it does say a digital notebook, uh, we are doing a paper notebook because I would like to collect it and then hand it back to you guys. And so that's all going to be worth 20 points of your grade. All right, so here is your notebook. It should include table of contents, dated entries, okay, notes, photos and drawings, and this should be in color, very important, and calculations. This is all your own work. None of this you should get from anybody else. Okay. Um, the photos and the drawings uh, you can get from somebody else if they took it, but you must give that other person credit. Notebooks should be neat and organized. Um, they should be bound or in a three ring binder. I don't want any loose papers. Okay, so here is your rubric. This is how you're going to get your 20 points. So here you see your 20. Again, name, just putting your name, the title, the section, and having the rubric attached. And I will include this rubric up on uh, Brightspace. Just for doing that, you get one point. And if you follow these boxes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to circle these boxes. If you follow all of this, you're going to get full points 
and you're going to get a 20. Okay. Any plagiarism will result in 100% failure. I do get at least one a year, um, and it's not just you that will fail, but also your, the person that you copied off of. I'm, I did have an unfortunate person who um, had lent their paper to somebody, and that person took their name off of it and put their own, and then handed it in as their own, and I had to fail both of them. And so please make sure that you, this is not a group paper, I, I do want you guys to do your own work. If you're having a hard time with something, come see me, okay? So if you don't understand chi-square, you don't understand what you're getting, come see me, okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit about your paper. This is not a full paper. There is no abstract, no introduction, okay? Um, and we're not going to do a presentation video. So I know it says here presentation video. Um, I have taken that part out. Okay, so we're going to follow the rubric. And, and so when you start your paper, you want to make sure that you're starting with your results section. Um, and each of your sections should be labeled. So you should have one that says results and then one that says either discussion or conclusion. You're going to make sure that you write up your table, write up your tables and your figures um, in past tense. Okay. Um, no possessives, no we, no I. So if you write something like we counted five plants, um, instead write five plants were counted. And you know that if um, you never start a sentence with an actual number, you would write out the word five, but you get the idea. Um, don't explain your results, okay? So just write the results, you know, critiques of any kind, and then make sure that if you do have figures, so figure one, figure two, table one, table two, that you are citing them within your narrative. Like I said before, number your figures and your tables consecutively throughout. So table one, table two, figure one, figure two, chi-square is going to be its own table. And make sure that you include a table or figure description. So table one, period, and then you're going to write what it is. And then you can have your table. Okay. Usually when you have a figure or a picture, figure one, that's going to go underneath. So table um, descriptions go above and figure descriptions go below. All right, so this is where we get to the meat of your paper. Uh, this is, should be fairly long, and I know I do get some questions, how long should your paper be? I can't really give you a length. If I tell you three pages, I might have some people that three pages is great, and then others that are trying to squeeze in teeny tiny little writing, and then others that are really trying to stretch it out. Okay, so with your discussion, we are going to analyze and interpret your results. Um, don't restate your results. That is not what a discussion is. You want to analyze what do they mean. So if you get a, oh, where's my pen go? There we go. Let's say you get a nine to three to three to one ratio. Well, what does that mean? Okay, well, why did you get that? We can talk about Mendel and Mendel's laws and then the pattern of inheritance and all of that. So we kind of want to go into some background information. You will need to cite material. Okay, and anything that you need to cite, um, you do need to have a works cited page, and that's the next slide. But um, please cite um, information, text, um, to support your discussion.
Okay, so for your works cited, you do need at least to have one reference. And this one reference uh, is not the lab manual. It needs to be something other than the lab manual, and it cannot be Wikipedia. So please have a creditable source. If you're un unsure of if that is a credible source, um, you could see any of the library liaisons or the uh, learning commons. Um, they can help you with that, or you can come to me and ask. Okay? I am not picky as how you should cite. It could be MLA or APA or Chicago style, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, and then we are go actually going to be going over chi-square um, while we are doing the mitosis and meiosis lab, um, specifically mitosis. And chi-square is, chi -square is used to compare observed data from expected data. And specifically for this lab, we are making sure that our, we are accepting our null hypothesis. We want there to be no difference between the numbers that we get and Mendel's laws of inheritance. We want to see a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio or a 3 to 1 ratio, depending on the traits that we're looking at. We want to see if there is a significant difference between the expected observed. We don't want there to be. Okay. Um, and we'll go into this in more detail as to how to calculate it out. There, there are a couple of steps that you would need to follow. Okay, so for your fast plants, depending on where you're sitting is which table that you are at. So for table one and table four, you guys are sitting in, uh, towards the front of the class, you are planting the F2 generation of seeds and what they have here on the seed packet is the recessive trait so dominance versus recessive if something is dominant that means it is going to mask a trait that is recessive so let's say we had dad who had brown eyes and mom who had blue eyes um, so let's just do a quick Punnett square, very, very quick. And the eye color is not just one trait, but just for the sake of this video. Um, so we have dad who has brown eyes, big D, big D. And let's do mom, there's mom, and she has blue eyes. Now, all of the kids, all the probability of the kids they're all going to have brown eyes, dad's eyes, okay? Because it's dominant, it's going to mask. This generation here is called your P, your parental generation. These in here, inside the little boxes, that's your F1 generation. Now let's say, we are going to cross multiply our F1 generations, okay? we would get big D, big D, big D, little D, big D, little D, little D, little D. Inside the boxes now is our F2 generation. And what they're showing here is just the recessive. So non-purple stem, which is actually a green stem, is recessive, hairless is recessive. Okay, table two, you guys are also looking at non-purple stem, but you are looking at yellow-green leaf. So for your yellow-green leaf, this is also recessive, non-purple stem is recessive. The ratios for the seed packet for the first group and the table one, table four, this is going to be a 3 to 1 ratio when we're just looking at purple stem. It would be a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio if we're looking at both stem color and hairless. I have never looked at hairless, so I'm not 100% sure on, on what we're going to get for that. Um, when we guys, when you take a look at the, um, the results in a couple of weeks, um, we'll decide whether or not we want to include hairless into our um, phenotypes. For down here, this will definitely be a 9 to 3 
to three to one, where nine of your plants will have a purple stem, green leaf. Then three of your plants will have a purple stem, green leaf. Three plants will have a purple stem, yellow green leaf, and just the one, bring back my pen, will have this, what, the, what it says here, the non-purple stem, yellow green leaf. So for some reason the seed packet gives us just your one uh, sixteenth probability. All right, my last table here. You guys are looking at rosette dwarf, non-purple stem. You're going to have a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio on that as well. Okay. So let's look a look at the traits here. Um, for my other classes, I may have said this wrong, so let me just um, reiterate on what is dominant and what is recessive. So here is our standard plant, um, green stem, green leaf. What is dominant is this purple color. So purple is dominant, green is recessive. Rosette being tiny is recessive. This yellow green leaf color is recessive. Being tall is dominant. Now we already talked about what our P generation and um, F1 and F2 generation, but just to reiterate, our P are our parentials and they create the F1 generation. The F1 generation was then crossed and they create our F2 generation. So this is our F2 generation. So in a lab somewhere, they had crossed the parentals, gotten the seeds, planted them up, crossed those, and then given us the seeds to grow up the F2. Normally, I would grow the F1, harvest the seeds, and then grow F2. But instead, this year, we're just looking at F2 generation. So here is our plan. We are going to plant our F2 generation, which is what we've already done. And from there, we could figure out our parentials and our F1 generation, which we should know. Um, but we want to make sure that it's following Men Mendelian law. We want to make sure that we are taking notes. So we are taking notes on the day that they are planted, and then four days later, roughly four days later. We obviously cannot come in on the weekend, so either come in a couple of days before or a couple of days after. Um, so if you are Monday, you're going to come in on Friday, and then you're going to come in on Monday, and then on Friday. So that would be day one, four days later, day seven, 11 days later, and then um, that next Monday is when we are going to be all done. If you're Tuesday, you're also going to do Friday. So Friday, Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday. If you're Wednesday, you're going to do Monday, And if you are Thursday, you're going to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday. And if you are Friday, you're going to do Tuesday. Friday, Tuesday, Friday. We'll calculate our, our ratios and then look to see if we have um, data that supports Mendelian law. We're looking um, at fast plants, Brassica rapa, which you guys read about. The reason why we're using these is that they go from seed 
to seed in 28 days. Really, really fast life cycle. Um, you can get lots of data very, very quickly. We're only going to be growing it up until right around between day 9 to day 14. I want you guys to see them flower. They, they do have very pretty flowers. But we should be able to see their phenotypes right around day 7. Okay? If you guys have any questions about what you're doing, about your notebook, about planting, um, about color, please let me know. Make sure that you're taking lots and lots of pictures. All right, good luck, everybody.